And Joanne, would you please call the roll? Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Here. Commissioner Engel? Here. Commissioner Rollins? Here. Commissioner Vogelsang? Here. Commissioner Wright? Commissioner Wright? She's on mute. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, we, will, we do have one change to the agenda. Um, item number two, the FAU MOU is going to be deferred again since we have not gotten any definitive information. Uh, commissioners, do you have any other changes? Um, I don't see Commissioner Rollins, so um, is there a way we can get him? You're on mute, Brianne. I sent Bob a note to start his video. Bob on the bottom left got hand it. corner. You got it? Got it. There he is. There he is. Hey. Okay, Buenos dias. Fish Buenos. Good evening. Okay. Uh, so are there any other changes to the agenda other than item number two? To defer it. Okay, so hearing none. It's now time for public requests. Brianne, would you like to read our public requests? Sure. We have one that came in. Um, this is from Jim Miller, 480 East Boca Raton Road, Boca Raton 33432. Madam Chair and Commission, the Friends of Gumbo Limbo is pleased to see the subject of the water on the agenda this evening. I want to confirm the email message sent to Brianne Harms that we completely urge moving ahead with the project and hope to see it put out for bids as quickly as possible. The center staff is working miracles to make the limited seawater supply work to keep our animals healthy and the faster we can have a reliable supply, the better. All of us want to move ahead on a more definitive master plan, but recognize it will take time. It is important to take steps to make sure the center can be safe and continue to carry out the mission Friends shares with the city and the district. We understand and agree that such things as taking care of the main building, including a new roof and ACs. Another area that needs attention is the sea turtle rehabilitation area. Friends has begun a study jointly with the city and the center of short-term actions that can be undertaken for that program. The sea turtle program only uses about 25% of the current supply of seawater, but does depend on a regular reliable supply. We also look forward to seeing a new tower on the boardwalk. The plan put forward in 2016 for the seawater supply system is still what is needed for the present programs and critical for the future of the center. It will be great to see it finally being done. I wanna add a great round of applause to the city and center staff for taking care of the facilities in the critical times. Thank you, sincerely, Jim Miller, President, Friends of Gumbo Limbo. Thank you, Brianne. Uh, members of the public, I know Mr. and Mrs. Chaffee are in attendance. Would anyone else like to call in and speak? Well, then I have one person that's um, coming into the meeting now. I don't know if they want to speak. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else would like to call in? Brianne, would you like to give the number out again, just um, in case somebody did, does want to call in and, and speak? To, st to press star nine if they want to raise their hands? Or to call in? I have one more person joining now too. Okay. Whoever's calling or joining us, we are still doing public requests. Yeah, anybody online right now on YouTube, you can dial 312-626-6799 to join by phone. It's 312-626-6799. And the meeting ID, I think, is listed on YouTube if they wanted to join that way. It's just going to be typed up there. We'll just wait just another second, just in case somebody does want to call in. We only have five people on YouTube. We can, uh, Jacob, we can always reopen public requests if somebody does call in. Is that acceptable? I don't hear you. I'm sorry, I was on mute. It's, it's your, your discretion, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jacob. Okay, right now we will close public requests. Um, it's time for the approval of the minutes of the board meeting, of the virtual meeting held on April 20th, 2020. Uh, that can be found on page three of your agenda packet. Do I hear a motion? Move to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Engel, Joanne, moved, had the motion, and Mr. Rollins seconded. Thank you. Is there any discussion? 
We'll have a roll call vote. Joanne, would you please call the roll? Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our first item of business is the Sugar Sand Park easement found on page 11. Brianne, would you like to brief us on that? Commissioners, the city is, is looking to install a new type of, it's an arm that will be more uh, secure during hurricanes across the intersections at Camino and military. There is currently, Jacob did some research this afternoon uh, for me as well, and he can speak to this. There's currently a 15 foot easement, a utility easement, and that's um, defined as in, it, it, it's forever with the city, correct, Jacob? That is correct. The easement exists in perpetuity to the city of Boca Raton and to certain franchised utilities for the construction and maintenance of certain utility related devices, water, wastewater, telephone, gas, cable television, and electrical utilities at, at that particular location. As, uh, as Brianne said, it's a 15 foot utility easement, which was dedicated by Platt as part of the Sugar Sand Platt. So this will define part of that as this traffic control signal that they're installing there. There's already, a, the, we, did, we did a drive by today. There's a box there already. Um, it will, right now there's a cable across the street. It'll just be arms now. So that'll be more secure during the hurricanes. So we're looking for a motion tonight to approve this. Do I hear a motion? Well, excuse me though, um, Madam Chair. Well, I'll make the motion to get the discussion. I just wanted to have the discussion. Okay. I'll second the, the motion. So Joanne, Commissioner Ernst made the motion, Commissioner Rollins seconded. So Mr. Ernst, would you like to start the discussion, please? Yeah, Brianne, I just wanna know what, what is it that we're being asked that's different? There's already existing a traffic box there. There's already an existing easement there. They're just changing the lighting, um, the traffic lighting there. So are, are they asking the district for a greater easement or anything that would it's still fair the park. It's 15 feet, and that's what's designed already on the plat. But I think this is just defining this area as the, as a traffic easement. Like they have it sectioned off in different areas, like what Jacob was reading on the plat earlier. So I think they're just trying to define this area as for this traffic signal. And there is a box already there. So this is this is within that 15 foot easement that the city already has. There is a 15 foot easement already, correct. And so they're not encroaching any further onto our property than that easement that already exists. Right. Okay. And there's no cost to the district. Correct. And is there any change to, I mean, is the traffic box going to be a giant box or the same as what they already have? It's, it's already there. That will not change. It's just that the arms will be different. It won't be the poles with the cables across. Okay. Um, All right. Is there any other discussion, commissioners? Hearing none, Joanne, would you do a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ernst. Yes. Commissioner Engel. Yes. Commissioner Rollins. Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang. Yes. Commissioner Wright. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Okay, we're going to move to the pipes and pumping project update. Um, Brianne, would you like to update us on this? Yes. Um, as we start looking at budgeting for next year, this is one project that we've carried over from year to year. It's currently budgeted this fiscal year for 3.2, but the project will not be complete this year. So as we, as we look at our finances next year and we want to plan for, for different things in the budget, um, staff is still 100% supportive of this project. The friends, as you heard Jim Miller's statement uh, during public comments, they're 100% supportive of it. They, they list it as a priority project. Um, so I, I just want to, as we move forward to budget for next year, I want to make sure that we are all still good with carrying this money forward into the next fiscal year for this project. It will go out to bid. I don't know exactly when it's going to go out to bid, but it's, good. it's ready for the procurement phase with the city. They've got all the permits in hand. Um, things got a little bit delayed, I guess, with the pandemic. So we'll see. But I think they plan on going out to bid. It just would not be complete by September 30th, 2020. So it will carry over into the next fiscal year. And because those monies, we don't carry money over until it's approved in the budget. I just wanted to confirm that everybody's, uh, we're good carrying that money over as we start planning for next year's budget. Do Jay we need a motion for this? Yeah, I was just gonna ask for that. The, the answer is yes, a motion would be appropriate to provide your executive director with the appropriate direction. Move to uh, approve carryover of the monies for the pumping station 
from fiscal year 2019-20 to 2020-21. Do I hear a second? I'll second, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rollins. Uh, Joanne, that was Mr. Engel to make the motion and Mr. Rollins, Commissioner Rollins to uh, second. Is there any more discussion? Yes, ma'am, I have a question. Um, it, you know, this, this project has been going on for quite a number of years and uh, the longer it's uh, gone on, the higher the price tag on this uh, project has become. Um, and I'm just wondering if there is some type of uh, ceiling that we could put on this at uh, 3.2 million. Uh, Jacob, you may have to answer this question. Uh, I, it seems like, uh, you know, the, and we don't know whether the money is going to come in at 4 million or even higher. Uh, if it comes in higher than 3.2 million, uh, the question is, do we have the prerogative of saying that's uh, the most we're willing to spend and see if we couldn't find uh, support from the friends from the balance or from the city for the balance? Jacob, do you? I, I can try to respond. The, the, the short answer is yes, because any contract that the district were to enter into would be subject to a budget and appropriation by the district. So if the city were to go out to bid and all of the responses were to come back in excess of what we have budgeted for this particular project, we would ask the city as our agent in this discussion who's going out through the procurement process to essentially reject all of the bids having exceeded what we, we've allocated for that project, um, unless, as the commissioner indicated, we want to look at some alternate funding route, either through the city directly or through the friends or some other third party who would si assist with any difference in the um, anticipated cost and what we have budgeted for that project. So we wouldn't be compelled to pay the full amount if we've only budgeted a certain number, but uh, we'd have some decisions to make in the context of rejecting the bids or seeking some alternate funding source for the difference. Yeah, well, I, I, I want to be clear. I'm, I'm certainly interested in doing the project and I'm certainly not interested in delaying the RFP, but I am interested in uh, you know, limiting our uh, liability beyond what we have budgeted and uh, in the hopes that if it does go over that, that we could get some support from the friends and or the city or both uh, to complete the project. And I don't know, with our prior history of supporting uh, the, uh, the project at uh, Gumbo Limbo and, uh, and Red Reef, if we have a, a obligation to, uh, if the city uh, wants to accept the bid, and if we are uh, say, well, we're not spending any more than 3.2, uh, are we putting ourselves in any kind of a, a, a problem with the, uh, you know, the the folks at Gumbo Limbo and with the city? I know you may not be able to answer that question, but it just seems like, you know, we, we've, uh, we're at the point where uh, physically we're, we're, you know, uh, we're a lot tighter than we ever have been uh, before on our, uh, our budget. And, uh, and I'm not anticipating that uh, our ad valorem revenue is gonna be any greater uh, next year than it was this year. Perhaps it could be even less if the property uh, values go down. What, what, what I could offer, Madam Chair, to the Commissioner is any direction the board were to take tonight could include um, direction to Brienne, and we can help with her to craft some language to the city, being very clear on what the district's uh, cap or ceiling budget is for this project. Well, can I make a motion to amend, amend the prior motion that basically um, amends the 3.2 million? The district's contribution is. Um, capped at 3.2 million or do you have does he have to withdraw the original motion or can this be amended jacob if that was an amendment you would need to vote on the amendment first and then on the motion as amended so okay. we take two first, separate votes the first amended. Motion, amended. amendment can i just ask too can we make that inclusive of any contingencies too so it's not 3.2 plus a contingency of 10 percent or something like that yeah i th i think i I'm, I share Bob's uh, concerns. Um, we are a taxing authority with a much tighter limited budget and therefore um, we can allocate, we already have 3.2 allocated and according to the 2016 um, letter from ATM, they were estimating 2.5. I, I think they're gonna come in, I would expect well below their 3.2, um, but I think it also gives the 
um, it, it really gives the group a, a, a budget <laughs> to work with. And if it's higher, they will either come back to us or to others to contribute towards it. And if they feel strongly about it, they will pay for it and move forward. But we have to be clear with our um, financial commitments, particularly with Gumbo Limbo, 3.2 million is a lot of money. And this is a very significant investment. And it's, as we all know, some of these projects kind of can mushroom into something much bigger. Um, I'm pretty confident that the city is gonna be within the 3.2, but um, we, we don't wanna be on the hook for it. And I guess it goes to the, really the city's budgeting process, which I'm not real familiar with how they are quote, bidding this particular project. If they're bid to design or they're just gonna award to the low bidder and if the low bidder is 5 million, would they continue to go with it? I think that's by capping at the 3.2 is saying they need to rethink who's gonna pay for it. Okay, we have a motion that has been amended. I need a second. Second. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Rollins. Mm -hmm. um, is there any more discussion on the amending of this motion? Hearing none, Joanne, would you do a roll call vote for the amended, amending the original motion, please? For Commissioner Ernst. Yes. Commissioner Engel. Yes. Commissioner Rollins. Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang. Yes. Commissioner Ray. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so now we have the amended motion. We need a, a motion on the item as amended. Yes. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, so Joanne, Commissioner Engel did the motion as amended and Commissioner Ernst did the second. Is there any more discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair, I just have one further discussion uh, item. Is that the, uh, the main portion of the pumps are uh, designed to be in a building on the east side of uh, A1A? And all the pumps, as I understand it, are on the uh, west side of A1A. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a, a real concern that I would like to express regarding uh, the potential damage uh, to that site and uh, making sure that if uh, we put $3.2 million in this project, I know most of it's going to be underground, but I want to be certain that uh, uh, there's insurance on that, uh, that building and those pumps that are going to go in there. I'm concerned about windstorm uh, damage as well as flood damage to that uh, property. On the east side, the new property on the east side. That is correct. I don't know what the value of, uh, I forgot, it, I think it was in that schedule that we're talking about it, but it's over half a million dollars, mm -hmm. I believe, uh, for that uh, pump in the uh, building that is uh, situated over there. And that elevation there is, uh, it's, it's higher than most, but it still uh, c concerns me about the potential for uh, storm damage to that property. And, and I'm just wondering if they've taken that into consideration because if those pumps are damaged by a storm uh, and they're out of business for a, a period of time, then you could end up having uh, uh, fish and turtles that are stressed due to the lack of uh, fresh water. We're gonna have to give them CPR. Yeah, well, just just a comment, you know, I, I mean, I think it's a good idea, uh, a good location, because it'll prevent the cavitation that they were concerned about with a, in, in drawing uh, bubbles into the pipeline, and a lot of other, the other things being able to blow out the, the pipe uh, when it gets, uh, you know, plugged up. But it, it's a, it's a big project. And, uh, you know, uh, and we've been very fortunate, knock on wood, with storms, that last storm, uh, if it had come through the Bahamas straight across to our area, we, we would be, we wouldn't have to be worrying about uh, uh, demolishing the uh, facilities at Gumbo Limbo. I think the storm would have taken care of that for us. And, it, and in the process, these pumps and piping would have been uh, very vulnerable. Um, I, we should probably direct Rianne and Jacob to add that information into the communication with the, uh, with the center and the people who are involved in, in the uh, procurement. Just, just, just a point of order, that's all. I mean, I, uh, I think it's important that we move forward with this project uh, as, as it's been going on long enough, but I certainly want to be prudent about protecting the property and making sure that it's adequately built to withstand, uh, you know, a storm. Uh, I don't know about, you know, rising tides, if we had high tide and, um, and, and uh, we could have some problems with that, uh, that pump and piping, or at least the pumps that are there. 
I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Wright. Um, well, when it, in the document on page 18, it was discussing the possibility of a catastrophic pump failure on the ones that they had now. Um, and they were talking about a spare pump to have on site, which was only about seven to $8,000. Is that still an option to have in case the pumps on the east side that are newly built can still be used in, the, in an emergency like that? Or is the new piping system something that you can't plug in something on the west side anymore? You know what I mean? Yeah, a good point, Eric. Just to keep them going for what did it say, six to seven days after until the pumping, the pipes can get, or the pump can get back up and running again. Brianne, would you like to uh, ask? I'll, I'll research that. Yeah, let me find out. That's a good point, Aaron. If they need it, if it's something that they would need. Well, hopefully we won't have a storm, but looking ahead. Um, I've gotten lost. We haven't voted on this yet. No, no, no we haven't. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Joanne, would you do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Ray? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Ernst, page 47 of our agenda packet, the approval of payroll and invoices, please. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion for the approval of payroll and invoices of a total of $1,900,081,187.39. Second. Discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, I just have a, a couple of uh, items of uh, just information on. The uh, health insurance that we have in place now, do we know when that renewal comes up? I think it's in November. Okay. I, I'd ask that uh, when we get the renewal uh, information, is that uh, it be circulated so we can take a look at, um, with health insurance rates going the way they are, I want to uh, take a look at the plans that they may ha offer us if, uh, if there's a significant increase in that. I, I want to take a look at that. Um, the uh, other item was the, uh, there's two charges there for a Bank of America um, one for thirty nine eighty two and the other for twenty six eighty eight. It just says, um, I'm not sure of the explanation there. I guess it's uh, Amazon, UPS, and a variety of vendors that are in that. Uh, is that a credit card? Yes, those are both credit card chart, both different credit cards. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, just when the health insurance comes up, I just like to take a look at that before we re automatically renew that. Okay. Is there any other discussion, commissioners? Joanne, would you do a roll call vote, please? Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Time for our reports and discussion items. Uh, our executive director, Ms. Brianne Harms. Commissioners, um, at our last meeting two weeks ago, we, there was a motion made to amend the MOU that we have with the Friends for the Tower, um, and that was to extend that for six months. One item that wasn't clarified in the motion was that the, the project has changed, and our current MOU dictates that it's a funicular that there's being, that's being designed, but now it's going to be ramping. So we wanted to, um, and Jacob can kind of talk about what the motion needs to say clearly, um, we need to make a new motion to define it as is no longer the funicular, but now the ramps and extend it for six months. And I'll let Jacob weigh in on that. Jake. I think that really covers it. As we were uh, revisiting the MOU to prepare the second amendment and provide for the extension, we were reviewing our notes and went back and looked at the minutes and confirmed that the board's discussion included the idea of a ramp as an alternative to the funicular along with the six months, but the motion was limited only to the six month extension. So just to ensure that it's the board's intention to provide the other option as well, we'd just like to clarify the motion from the last meeting and we'll go ahead and finalize that amendment. Commissioners, could I have a motion to uh, amend our motion from the last meeting so that we can clarify that the MOU will include the six months as well as the ramp? Madam Chair, I'll make the motion to amend it. Second. 
Okay, Joanne, that was Commissioner Ernst who made the motion and Commissioner Engel who seconded. Is there any discussion? Thank you. Joanne, would you do a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ernst. Yes. Commissioner Engel. Yes. Commissioner Rollins. Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang. Yes. Commissioner Wright. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harms, is there anything else that you wanted to share? Just a small update on, on as you guys know, a lot of the passive parks and, and have started to open and the, and the municipal golf course has opened as well. Um, tomorrow they're going to open uh, the question, there was some question this week about our parks. So tomorrow they're going to open Sugar Sand Park and Patch Reef for passive use only, not the buildings um, and, and not any areas where they, where people, large groups could cluster. So it'll just be for the walking trails and um, basketball as long as people are following the social distance guidelines that are put out there. So those facilities will open tomorrow. And Brian, what about the Spanish River Park, the Horn Lake? That one is, is the passive areas are open over there. And what about swim and racket? There's, is there any timeline that they have for uh, opening tennis courts and the pools? Uh, not right now for the, the community pools are open for the Palm Beach County executive order, but the municipal pools, um, these have not opened yet. Okay. And that's my update. Okay, thank you very much. District Council, Jacob. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners. I just have one quick item. Uh, we're now in the midst of our second virtual board meeting using communications media technology, which is authorized by a recent executive order of the governor. The state of emergency in the state of Florida expires on May 8th. And along with that expiration, the prior executive order would have expired. However, last Thursday, the governor entered a new executive order providing for the phase one step-by-step -step reopening plan for the state and packaged in last week's executive order was an extension on the CMT virtual meeting option. So we have this, uh, this opportunity for at least a little while longer. I know we're meeting like this this evening uh, based on discussions we've had with the executive director. We anticipate that our second meeting in May will also be conducted in this format. Um, again, uh, we, we currently have this option so long as the governor's order remains in place and we're continuing to monitor the action in Tallahassee uh, to the extent that there's any additional um, opportunity or relief that comes our way from the governor's office and should the need arise to go back to an in-person meeting, we'll certainly advise the executive director and the board if and when that time comes. But for at least the time being, we're okay having these virtual meetings under the most recent executive order of the governor. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jacob. That's good information. Um, okay, commissioners. Commissioner Engel? I'm good. Of course you are. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner Ernst? Um, Madam Chair, just a, a, more of a question and a, a thought to the group is, you know, last meeting we approved the installation Microphone. of a fence. Oh, it's not on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can hear sure. Okay. Um, but we ins we approved the installation of a fence at the oh. Boca. Someone's playing with the audio, I guess. Um, the fence over at Boca Tica for the um, tennis courts because they were using them for a pickleball uh, environment. And it occurred to me, and if there's a demand for pickleball, you know, and we are not, you know, firm on when and where this whole um, the golf course will evolve. I know when we first started, if you asked us months ago, we were on the path to do it. Right now, we're kind of on a hold flight pattern because there's a lot of moving parts due to the, the this um, coronavirus. Should we consider? Um, Modifying those tennis courts into pickleball courts is something that, you know, the base is already there. Um, and I know there's probably a wide range of, of cost to do it, but if we could do it on a very low budget um, and as a temporary basis, I think we could establish whether there is a demand for pickleball out at Boca Tica. And if there is, you know, we kind of design that into the next phase when we move further along because that area won't be used anytime soon. Yeah, I just, I, I would agree with uh, Craig. That I was thinking the same thing. I, I drove by there and there were people that were playing tennis over an improvised uh, uh, net. And uh, I, I think uh, it would take a little bit, you know, to, uh, 
to bring the cord up a little, uh, Craig. I think it's uh, probably these. It's probably in bad uh, need of resurfacing, but I think we should explore the possibility of getting that open so that uh, you know when when play is <clears throat> able to resume, that uh, that's an opportunity to test that area. Okay. It's in bad need of resurfacing those cords. Yeah. They're a mess. Could I get a motion to direct Melissa to look into? the possibility uh, and get some pricing on this to bring it, it back to us at a future meeting? I'll make the motion. I'll right. second, I'll second uh, Steve's uh, motion. Okay. And thank Craig for bringing it up. Yes. The, only, the only question I would have would be, do we have to provide parking? There is that area for parking, but there's no parking spaces or anything like that. Is that something that we would have to provide or is this just something that we're just offering for like walk up? Well, I think, that, yeah, I think that area there, Aaron, uh, I, I can't remember, I, was it, I think it was available for parking when the golf course was um, uh, open, and, uh, but I, I think that it just has to be policed up and cleaned up because there was uh, still some construction yeah. debris along there that uh, probably would need to be removed, but I, I, I think it's worth, worth exploring what the possibilities are of, of getting that open. Uh, for mm -hmm. the uh, neighbors that uh, want to play there. And I think that's probably who would use it is the people that are close proximity that probably could walk up. There's mm -hmm. a parking yes. lot, just now, not you, okay. you can only have singles anyway, so until, you know, further notice. So they, there wouldn't be that many cars. Well, pickleball is played with four people. Well, well it, it'll, it'll open up in time, you know, even if it's a month or two. I, I mean, if we kind of look at this as a, let's say a one year or two year project, um, let's assume we're through the phase two, phase three reopening of our area. Um, I think we need to think about, um, you know, where are we going with the golf course? We, I think we laid out a design, we're waiting for the city's approval on it. Um, but we have a kind of a big unknown with the economy, with our funding and how this is all going to work. So it may take longer. I don't know. Um, or, and the other big bogey in the whole thing, and no pardon, is, is what's going on with Boca Muni. Um, that the environment changed significantly um, with Boca Muni and GL Homes still has an option to walk away is my understanding. So if GL Homes walks away from their um, land proposal there, I think that the, it opens the door of a question is, are we doing what we want to do as a community? And I think that's a joint conversation with the city. Um, in the meantime, we have the opportunity to, let's look into the, you know, cleaning up the tennis courts to be pickleball courts or whatever, our combination. And then the thing right behind this that we should really start considering is um, the whole hotel site is really, uh, you know, a giant mess. And if we're, if if the plan is to do nothing with the the east side for some time, I think we really should clean out the whole hotel site and make it a flat bare land so it's not an eyesore with a fence around it for years to come. So I, mean, I think that's something we can do, you know, anyway. We need to start get, getting some estimates to really clean it up, just put grass over the whole thing so it's... The football courts on... Um, on the, the dais right now. So uh, do we need approval from the city to go yeah. forward with that? Yes, yes. Anything that we do on the west side under the current ILA and Jacob can weigh in has to have approval by the city. So that would be the starting point. I could reach out to the city and, and talk to them about the options to put the, to, you know, that we're willing to put the pickleball courts that we want to explore that option. And then we can see where they're, where they're at on it and move forward if they're, if they're good with that. It's an interim measure. It's not a permanent, yep. And, and I, I agree with Craig too, is that we need to keep in mind uh, that area over there that uh, where we've demolished both the clubhouse and the, and the hotel uh, needs to be policed up at some point. If it's going to be an extended period of time before we develop that, um, even uh, that fence along the, uh, the uh, south uh, portion of the west course, you know, where the shrubbery, uh, yeah. it, it's almost a losing battle trying to bring those plants back. We need to in the long term, we need to think about what we're going to do with uh, that if we don't go forward. If something happens with the uh, Boca Municipal and GL walks away, uh, uh, Craig's spot on. We need to uh, address that, uh, you know, and keep that in mind because it, 
I drive by by there, and Aaron does every night. I'm sure going home, I drive by there uh, most every other night, and, and it not anymore. <laughs> not right now. Oh, <laughs> I haven't left my neighborhood. Are you oh, all right. Well, I, I'm I'm uh, uh, unfortunately uh, still having to uh, conduct business, and uh, but uh, yeah. I do go by there, and it does it does need to be uh, cleaned up. I think we've done a pretty good job about it, but at some point it needs to be uh, addressed if if we're not going to move ahead uh, with the golf course anytime soon. Would Thanks you like for- staff to start looking into that option of like Craig was saying, get rid of the hotel site the area there and put down sod do we want to look into the cost of that now or yeah i think it would be a good idea yeah i do too it may be something if we lay sod though don't we have to have irrigation yes we do right irrigation yes well those are things that we just have to definitely investigate uh because i I think we to be a a better neighbor i think we're going to need to do those things At, at the very least we need to clean up the site even if we don't put grass down, even if, you know, we just leave it bare earth, it still needs to be cleaned up because it's still an eyesore. Should we direct Melissa to uh, look into the cost of that, Brianne? Yeah, we'll take care of that. We'll look at that. Okay. Well, we have a motion to um, have, possibly have uh, Melissa look into resurfacing the tennis courts and making pickleball Mm -hmm. courts. Uh, is there any other discussion on this? It, it, just a, it's for Melissa to look into it, and actually, it's directing the um, executive director to work with the city to um, look for a temporary solution if it makes sense, because it is their property. Okay, and then I'll get with Melissa to talk about what, what their the cost is. Okay, any other discussion? Joanne, would you do a roll call vote, please? Sure, Commissioner Ernst. Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelson? Yes. And Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes, thank you. Good. Okay, Commissioner Wright? In that same, can I make a second motion to ask the director and um, Melissa to look into cleaning up the hotel site? Sure. Do I hear it? I need a second. motion. Okay, thank you. That was Commissioner Rollins, Joanne, who did the second on Commissioner Ernst's motion. Any other discussion? Joanne, would you do a roll call vote on the motion to clean up the hotel and the, uh, the site on the west side? Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Anything else, Craig? No, I'm two for two this week, so I did better than last week, so I'm going to stay. Commissioner Wright, do you have any um, reports or discussion? No, I don't have anything. Commissioner Rollins? Uh, No, Madam Chairman, I'm good. Oh, great. Um, I do have a question about when we do get back in the boardroom. How do you want to do our social distancing? Do you want to have plexiglass between our seats, or do you want us to just kind of move to different tables and, and have the six feet between us. Brianne has had some ideas. Um, the we, we could come back at the next meeting with some options because we were going to talk to the, the manufacturers of this furniture to talk about extending it um, and, and talk about different things to, so that the five of you could sit here with six feet between you um, and then staff could sit elsewhere in the room and how we could work. We could come back with some options for you guys to look at and weigh in on if that makes sense. Unless anybody has something. Yeah, that makes sense to me. My, my question would be, um, maybe go back to Jake. How long is the, um, you know, the executive order for the governor, I think, expires on, the, on Friday. And so emergency order ends. This will be more of whatever we do. Let's say, and if it moves Friday to sometime in June, so be it. Um, what we're trying to do is more precautionary going forward in the future. Is that our goal or what, what do we want to do is it, can we keep the zoom gonna... calls? <laughs> the, the, the answer to the last question is yes. Under the executive order, the reopening order that the governor signed last Thursday, the option for these uh, virtual meetings where a quorum is not physically required has been extended 
to an in, um, an indetermined date. Okay. So for the time being, this is a valid option. Um, a, again, a, the, the governor at any moment could rescind that portion of the order, um, and, and we have to reevaluate. But again, for the time being, and presumably through May and into June, we'll have the option to conduct meetings in this uh, platform. But, but could we phase in so those people who want to join via Zoom enter, let's say, I want to go Zoom, but Susie and Steve want to be in the, we can do a combination? The, the answer is yes. And, and just for reference, there have been a number of municipalities and other local governments that have done just that. There have been commissions that have held meetings with the commission physically in the room, but no members of the public in attendance and the public can join much like they're joining this meeting through a Zoom platform and participate through a dial-in like we have this evening. Um, or you could have some combination with some members are participating by Zoom and other members physically in the room. Um, but the key being there would not be a requirement for a physical quorum so long as the governor's executive order is in place. Commissioner, okay. did you have something that you wanted to say? No. Oh, I thought you did. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say the Zoom has been working quite well. Um, and I have a feeling that we're going to be needing this in the fall, in the winter, maybe. Um, and I think the social distancing is something that everybody's going to be doing for the coming months. Um, so I, I say that the Zoom works quite well. I'm happy with it. I, I'm with 60% of our board being of that compromised age. Thank I, you. I, I, me? I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> My screen, you're on this side. <laughs> So uh, I'm just as happy doing this if that's all right with the rest of the board. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm in no hurry to make a change. Uh, yeah. It's very, it's been uh, a lot uh, easier to work with than I thought it would be. And I, I think it's a, a practical method to get past the social distancing uh, issue. I, agree. I can still keep on my pajama bottoms and not have to worry. <laughs> and no shoes. One, one thought exactly. though. Craig? I, I, one thought on it, though, is, is, is it worthwhile for Brianne to just explore the technology so that we go to a hybrid approach? So let's say in the fall, we're, we, we want to have some of us on Zoom and some of us, the outside public on Zoom. Can we, at, is it feasible to put it on the board in the, the, the boardroom there? Maybe you might need to expand some of the technology just to make sure it's a little easier structurally within the, the room. Okay. That's it. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Um, we do have a couple of future agenda items, the banking RFP to discuss, and Brienne would like to update us on the CIP projects. Do you have any other um, future agenda items, commissioners? No, I'm good. No, everybody good? Commissioner Engel. I move to adjourn. Do I hear a second? I'll second. second. Okay, Joanne, do a roll call vote, please. Sure. Commissioner Ernst? Yes. Commissioner Engel? Yes. Commissioner Rollins? Yes. Commissioner Vogelsang? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Motion passes, Madam Chair. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kelsey. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.